Hello everybody, it's Chibi, and today is going to be concluding my final review of Steins Gate. This is going to be a Steins Gate movie review, and this will be the final review that concludes the Steins Gate storyline. It's upsetting to see this series finally ending. I have enjoyed it from start to finish. I have loved the series so much. It gave me so many emotions. It's definitely in my top 10 anime of all time now. And it, it, it just is an amazing experience. If you have yet to watch Steins Gate, go give it a watch. I love it. I love Steins Gate a lot. But really, I need to talk about this movie. Th this movie right here, it's good. It's a good movie. I love the movie. You could consider the movie as a season two of Steins Gate. Honestly, I would have preferred if this movie was turned into a season two. Because with the movie being only about an hour and a half, there was a lot of time constraints and a lot of things were felt like they were forced and rushed and not explained properly. Remember, all these things are in my opinion, and this is my judgment from the series. I am a big fan of the first 25 episodes that's counting the OVA of Steinsgate. I love Steinsgate. I absolutely enjoyed it. I love this movie. It's a good movie. It's a very good movie. But I don't feel like it holds up to the overall title of Steinsgate. This movie pretty much takes in perspective of Kurisu. She's the main character, I guess you could say, of this movie. And she has to save a tragedy that befalls Kyoma. Kyoma is shifting back and forth between world lines. And as we can clearly see from the movie, he's not being able to tell which is the Steins Gate world line and which one's the other world lines he came from. And so Kurisu has to go back in time and kiss or do something impactful to Kyoma in the past to make him concrete that this is the Steins Gate world line. And so that's what the entire objective and goal of this movie is. Is, which I understand. I understand the objective. The objective is nice. It's pretty much like I said from the OVA. The OVA was about concluding the romance between Kurisu and Kyoma. This movie pretty much just shows stuff after that. Kurisu's entire motive in this entire movie is pretty much accepting who she is. And at the same time, she wants to save Kyoma because she loves him a lot. She has someone she wants to protect. That's the main character development we have for Kurisu. I don't feel like any of the characters technically were out of place in this entire movie. In fact, Kyoma's character improved even more than it did from the original series. The entire scene where you get to see Kyoma make a decision to say, Kurisu, do not change the past. Do not change the past. Do not make the time. Tom Leap Machine, do not do none of that, and do not try to save me. When Kyoma said that, it impacts you, because if anyone's watched the original series, which most likely you should watch the original series if you're going to watch this movie, but I mean, if you remember from the original series, and the first 25 episodes of all the hell Kyoma went through to get to the Steins Gate timeline, up to this very point... He's went through a lot. He's done so much stuff. He's trampled over so many people's dreams, their hopes, and everything in different lives just to have Mayuri and Kurisu alive in one timeline. And right here, that just shows you how much Kyoma has progressed. I mean, he states to Kurisu, do not do nothing. I don't care if I disappear. That's what he says. And that right there, it, it breaks your heart. Majority fans, even I did, would scream at the screen and say, Kyoma, fucking no. I did that. I'll be honest, I didn't want Kyoma disappearing, but looking at it at a standpoint, it just shows you how amazing his character is. He's willing to give up his life knowing how hard he tried, how much he did to pretty much save Mayuri and Kurisu, that he's willing to give up his self, his existence, to ever being in the Steins Gate world line. And I am completely honored by Kyoma in this movie. I mean, really, Kyoma is definitely top 10 best metal characters I've ever seen in an anime. He is a very good character that knows how to shift from comedy, serious mode, sadness, depression, to romance. He's a great character that really fleshes out human emotions, and I love that about Kyoma's character. Kurisu is also in similar in that entire instance. Now, let's talk about this, okay? There's a lot of different things set up in this movie that could have easily been made into a season two, not a movie. There's a lot of things, like I said earlier on, that felt really rushed, and honestly, in this movie. Like, the entire section at the end where Kurisu's jumping back and forth trying to make an impactful movie moment to Kyoma, like for instance she has to kiss him to make him remember, there was a lot of different ways they could have made that a lot more tragic, they could have done the same uh, version like how Kyoma kept going back in the past to save Mayuri, they could have shown Krisu going back and forth multiple times to try to save him, or save him to where he doesn't disappear, because that would have made it more impactful to the audience. Which I am fine, okay? My main concerns, honestly, with this is that it really didn't, like, flesh out and explain everything. Like, it made everything more confusing or didn't feel like it explained it in my eyes. Let me explain why. I understand the concept of reading Steiner now. That was my big thing I had a problem with from the original series. That's the only thing I really had problems with at the ending of the 25th episode of Steins Gate. It was just reading Steiner. With this movie, it pretty much brings out that all humans have a section of reading Steiner, and they have something called Deja Vu. We all know what Deja Vu is, but they really don't go 
into details with it. I mean, we get to see that Kyoma shifting back and forth with the, between world lines a lot because the world lines are getting close to the Steins Gate world line, but we don't know exactly why they constantly remember these memories. I mean, they know these emotions, they feel the emotions, but it's never really truthfully explained. Like, they never explained just why the events happened with Kelma getting his reading Steiner in the first place. Because I remember from the original series, Kelma was shaking in bed and he, he felt sickly and like he was about to vomit and that's when his st reading Steiner first appeared in the series. They never go back to that ever in the series, even in the movie to really explain that. So, when I saw the moment when Kelma got hit by a vehicle, I was about to say, oh my god, so is that how Kyoma got his reigning Steiner? That's exactly what I thought when I saw that scene. And then we find out that Kyoma can technically not die, which is understandable, since we found out with the entire issue with my Yuri constantly, you know, dying, that Kyoma can never change that event of her, you know, not dying. And so, pretty much, if someone's tried to kill Kyoma in the Science Gate world line, pretty much he could not die, because it is impossible, because he was already lived past that point. So, it's understandable why Kyoma didn't die. But what got me is I fought that entire moment when Kyoma got hit and tried to save Kurisu. That was the moment that was so impactful that caused him to remember different timelines to where he could actually have the reading Steiner. That's what exactly I fought. Because the motions in that entire bit. But the thing that gets me, okay, the main thing that bugs me a lot is after the entire part where Kurisu kisses Okabe or Kyoma earlier on in the past, we see, you know, Kurisu kiss a younger Kyoma. Pretty much, Kilma runs up to Mayuri and helps her hold her your My Human Experiment. Now, this entire scene we have seen before from the original Steins Gate timeline, which I understand. We've seen that a couple times. That's the entire thing that was a major turning point in Kilma's life with Mayuri when her uh, family member died. So, right there, it was up saying it to see that once again. But this scene didn't change. It didn't change at all, and at the same time, pretty much, it felt like it didn't leave any impactful moments that would make, you know, Kilma remember himself in the future or he wouldn't leave the Steins Gate world line. For instance, I felt like the kiss between Kurisu and Okabe shouldn't have been the entire reason why Kyoma, you know, doesn't disappear in the Steins Gate world line. Because, I mean, I understand it's the first kiss and you'll remember everything and all that. It just, it felt very shallow. They could have went so much farther with this series. I mean, there were so many different opportunities to bring up the organization Saren once again in this. I mean, the entire bit when you have, for instance, Kurisu make the Time Leap Machine, that could have been used to be able to have Saren come back, hack into Daru's computer, cause the entire events of Mai Guri getting killed again, Moika being evil. It could easily have went that way. Honestly, it could have. But they didn't do it. And that is my biggest disappointment. See, if this would have been made into a season two, I felt like... They could have done things a lot better. I mean, we could have maybe had the same events that may have happened in the original Steins Gate with Kurisu's point of view, though. But it would have been very interesting, because then Kurisu would be on the same level as Kyoma and understand his emotions a lot better. I mean, we get to see an example of this in the entire movie of how Kurisu understands Okabe's entire emotions and what he went through, his loneliness, of nobody really understanding what he went through. But at the end of the day, Kurisu really doesn't show that she went through as much hell as Okabe did in the entire original Steins Gate series. So, like I said, the only main disappointment I have with this movie, which seems like I have a big disappointment, is that they should have made this into a season two, because with a movie that was only an hour and a half long, close to probably an hour and 40 minutes, it wasn't enough time to really make this movie as impactful as the original series, which it is a movie, so of course it wouldn't. I feel like, honestly, but after watching this movie, I shouldn't have watched it, because... I mean, I'm a big Steins Gate fan, as you all know. I love this series. I love these characters. And I told you, Okabe has a major character improvement. We get to see some more romance with Krisu and Kyoma. But it's not enough for me to say that this should be watched. The movie, a downright, I'm not saying you shouldn't watch it. It just, it leaves you wanting more. It does. And that's disappointing because it leaves you with, you know, with the writing of the original Steins Gate, they could have been so much more to this movie so much more I saw so much potential in this movie that I can talk for a couple hours about it because there's so much they could have done and that upsets me it upsets me a lot but overall this movie does not take down my overall impressions of the Steins Gate series I still believe Steins Gate is in my top 10 series of all time just the movie it's a shallower version of Steins Gate and it's upsetting I'm not saying though that you should never watch it Give it a watch. It's a good watch for anyone that wants to see the romance. But if you're looking at it as the same depth of a nice good storyline like the original Steins Gate did, I think you'll be oddly disappointed about the series. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm odd. As you all know how I cared about the Steins Gate. Maybe it's odd and I just did not like this movie for some other different reasons. Maybe it's because I was kind of picky about how the kissing scene was the entire factor of Kilma being able to stay in the Steins Gate world. I don't know. 
But at the end of the day, remember everybody, this is just my opinions and this is my look and my review on, you know, the Steins Gate movie. But tell me your thoughts on this movie. Were you kind of left disappointed with this movie? And at the same time, do you feel like, would you have preferred this movie to be a season 2 over a movie? Because they could have had a lot more potential with a season 2. Let me know in the comments below. And everybody, I love you all so much. Once again, no matter about this movie, I am still thankful you all recommended me to watch Steins Gate. And without all of you here, I probably would not have watched Steins Gate for many years to come. So thank you everybody. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out and El Sai Congru.